So before we start, before we go into information architecture, let's talk about the history of information architecture. Uh, so when the internet was uh, invented, uh, it was invented to document work and make it accessible and shareable among scientists and government when, when the internet first started. Uh, as it became public, accessible to public, slowly the adaption grew, right? And few years later, uh, we were in information age. Uh, what do you mean by information age? Uh, the age that we are in today. Today is hyper information. Like everything is available online. If you want to search anything, you can literally go to any platform and just look at it up, right? But before, uh, before this hyper information age, there was information age when people came online, they had access to internet and there was, there were a couple of websites that provided some information like Google search engine, Wikipedia and stuff like that. So, so instantly a lot of information started to become available to the public. Uh, but there was no consistency, uh, in structure, like every website, every web page was different. Uh, it was very new. People didn't know how to structure things, structure information, right? So there was a whole lot of inconsistency all over the internet, right? Uh, and it obviously resulted in bad user experience because since there was no consistency, uh, Jacob's law wasn't there in place that said, if your website is similar to other people's website, it will be more usable because everyone was doing something different with the architecture. So it was a mess, right? But, uh, in 1976, uh, architect and designer, uh, Richard Saul Worman, who's also the creator of Ted talk, uh, the coined the term, uh, information architecture. Uh, interestingly, the discipline was around the inf the discipline of information architecture has been around since humanity started and uh, it, it matured a little bit when the field of architecture became popular because when you're building something, right, when you're building a building, when you're making plans, you need to write information in a certain hierarchy, in a certain proportion. Uh, so architecture was, I, I guess, one of the first fields that took information architecture seriously and started to also implement it, right? Uh, but Richard uh, Saul Verman actually coined the term information architecture in uh, 1976. So although the idea was presented in 1975 or 76, it was not explored until 1996, right? So 76 to 96, almost 20 years, uh, there were, there was no talk about uh, information architecture. The, the term was coined, but it was not popular. So what happened in 1996? Uh, if you are familiar with this book, uh, this book happened in, uh, 1996. So, uh, how many of you have read this book? Uh, if not, then, uh, I highly recommend you read this book. It's a, it's a must read. It's a Bible for making information architecture for web and digital interfaces. Uh, so, uh, Lou Rosenfield and Peter Morville, they both co write, co wrote the book, the first version of the book and subsequent version of the book. Uh, in 1988, uh, and that is what popularized the term information architecture, uh, and it started being used within the design community. So after this book, it became very popular and the information architecture, the term, it got very, very popular. And so, yeah, they are the reason. Uh, so thanks to Lou Rosenfield and Peter Morville, uh, the book is still available today. It has been revised multiple times. And I think one more author has been added. So if you want to learn information architecture, I, I highly recommend you go through uh, and buy that book. Uh, so now we have learned about the history of IA, IA information architecture. Uh, let's talk about the definition of uh, information architecture. Uh, so the definition of information architecture is, uh, information architecture is logically organizing information elements and providing a helpful structure to the users. So it's easier to find any information, right? I'm going to repeat this definition one more time. Information architecture is logically organizing information elements and providing a helpful structure to the users. So it's easier to find any information, right? Now, if you notice, I have used the word information elements. What do I mean by information elements? Uh, I've written it down there. Uh, information elements mean anything which can be read or allow the user to take any action. So if you see a web page uh, or a app or anything, anything that you consume, which allows you to understand, comprehend or take an action is an information element. 
a text information element button information element the text in the button information element right so if you logically organize this information element right and provide a helpful structure so it's easier to find uh, information uh, that's information architecture so let me show you a very uh, quick example and very relevant example uh, if you see this uh, this is an instagram page uh, a screenshot of an instagram uh, post uh, now what i wanted to do is i wanted to take some time right and calculate how many information elements are there in this particular screen i'm going to give you some 10 seconds uh, you don't have to write or wrong just write the answer in the chat uh, if you count it uh, and information element as you as you know it means anything that can be read or allows the user to take any action right so just give it a count like count in your head i'll, I'll give you a couple of moment uh, oh, cool so how many elements uh, did you count uh, five uh 10 15 uh so there are basically 17 information element in the frame 15 i have marked in this picture and the rest of two i forgot to mark uh one is the question uh in the purple bounding box and one is the video the content itself so these 15 plus these two there are so there are total 17 information element in this frame right now when you are looking at the screen the information elements are in certain groups or they are in certain order or they are in certain hierarchy right if i were to give you all these elements uh without uh, this organization right without this organization just randomly through all these elements none of you would be able to understand what it is or the context or even be able to figure out that what is happening in this screen right so now if i show you uh, this now if you have to show this post to a friend of yours right you can either click the search button uh, and type the name open my profile and then scroll to this post right so uh, there are certain markers in the screen like the name uh, the title of the post uh, in the caption uh, which is marked by number 10 uh, that you can use to search this element in instagram right uh, so to give you a little more context uh, number 15 that is on the top uh, uh, that helps you identify who made the post the username uh, number 4 that is on the bottom uh, you uh, helps you identify what kind of content it is. it is is it a reel is it a post is it a carousel post stuff like that right number 8 if you see on the uh, bottom right uh, it helps you to identify if you want to save this or where can you find this particular content like if you have saved this you could go uh, click on number three and then select a uh, view save post i guess right so organizing and growing all these information elements has logically organized and created information elements right uh, so for this example i have used this one small element uh, that is this card uh, to to give you a simple example of uh, what information architecture is but ia is basically it, it goes beyond this small card this is one of this is one of the example of a big product called Instagram, right? This is one of the instance, uh, and I is also used to build navigation systems and search systems. Uh, so these are very vast and in-depth topic, and I'm and I'm not going to cover all of them in this session, at least in this video. Uh, I'm going to be covering all, both of these topic in depth in coming videos, uh, but for now, uh, just just understand that uh, I is also used to build navigation and search system along with. Uh, different type of pages different type of content different type of information and many confuse that many confuse information architecture with navigations or search so you would come across people uh, further along in your career who thinks that if you have to create an information architecture you have to create a search or you have to create a navigation but that's not it that's just one part of information creating information architecture uh, now if you do a google search of the word information architecture uh, you will come across images uh, that look similar to this right uh, now when i looked at this chart initially when when i first started learning about information architecture uh, and these images come came to me 
uh, and I observed them. Uh, I I I I asked a question to myself, right? How can something that that looks like this help the user? How is how is this chart helpful to user, right? They don't interact with this. They don't even see this chart and connections. We 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 only see UI user interface, right? And we interact with that. So how does designing this thing helps me as a user, right? Uh, but uh, then later on, uh, I found the answer, and the answer is it kind of does, right? So there is a catch here. Uh, if you uh, the image that you see and all the images that you see when you uh, Google search IA are the visual representation of an IA, right? In reality, IA is built in basically tools like Excel, Google Sheet, Google Docs uh, to create a structure. But if you had to present it visually, uh, this is how you would do it because this is easily consumable. If you had to present, if you present this to a top management or a stakeholder, they would understand, okay, what is the relationship between one or two pages or other pages. But uh, actually, so it's, it's, it's similar to design, right? You wouldn't show a stakeholder your sketch file, which has all the iterations, variations, and all the wild ideas that you have created. You would show them a mock-up, uh, a design in a mock-up or present them uh, in a beautifully or, or, or presentable way so they could understand and see. You would ideally create a prototype so they could interact with it, right? So similarly, information architects represent the IA that they create in a, in a form like this, right? Uh, so again, the question is, how does creating an IA helps the user, us? So <clears throat> when information architects share this schema, this chart schema to designers, UI designers and UX designers, uh, after consuming it, designers make a UI that communicates the same structure, which is interactive and user friendly, right? I'll, I'll repeat it once again. Uh, designers make a UI that communicates the same structure in which interactive and make it interactive and user friendly, right? Uh, so if you can see, uh, someone has converted this uh, screen into this visual design. So they would ideally follow the same structure, uh, like the top navigation will be there, uh, bottom navigation will be there. I mean, representation is different. Uh, it, it, it's upon, it's up to the UI designer to use a top navigation or a bottom navigation, right? Uh, that's, that's their expertise, but how should we be structured? Like if I click, let's say, uh, a button, like, uh, what item should it come? If I click settings, what item should come within these settings, right? What are the levels of navigation? These, this, this structure has to be followed by a UI designer. Cool. Uh, now let's look at, uh, how to create uh, information architecture. Uh, but we will do that. Uh, okay. Let's just skip this. Yeah, how to make an information architecture. Uh, so <clears throat> I'll, I'll, I'll explain to you this by an example, right? Uh, have you ever had a like messy wardrobe or room or a table, uh, and you have to clean it? Uh, what do you do? Uh, tell me if you take these four steps or not. First, uh, you see what things doesn't belong uh, to that particular place, like room or table or wardrobe, right? And then you collect them, uh, you group them together, right? Or you take it out or you basically group them. You group the things that belong to get, that belong to that place and the things that doesn't belong to that place, right? Uh, <clears throat> then uh, you would place each thing where they belong, right? And then you, you will further divide uh, things into different things. Like if you're doing a wardrobe, let's say you separate, uh, you group your undergarments at one place, your socks at one place, your trousers and shirts at one place, your handkerchief at one place and stuff like that. <clears throat> right. Uh, <clears throat> and that's how you basically first you group things together and then you further divide these things together. And when you do that, uh, each becomes its own category, right? Now, if you are a organizer, organization nerd, you might even label stuff, right? Like uh, I, I do labeling on boxes. Like if I have boxes and I put stuff in it, I do label the box saying that this box contains these five, six items. So whenever I want to retrieve something out of that box, I know that that box has that stuff, right? So it, it what I'm doing is essentially I'm making uh, it easier to find something that I would want to find, 
right? And I know that that particular uh, box would be present either in a drawer or in my wardrobe. And this is, uh, similarly, this is how information architecture also works. Uh, <clears throat> so there are four steps in creating information architecture. Uh, the four steps are content audit, content inventory, content organization, and content labeling, right? Uh, I'm gonna explain each of this. Uh, let's first understand content audit, right? It's a process of evaluating content or information elements across your product. So these include identifying something as small as a CTA copy or as big as a blog post. Uh, let's get let's get back to the organization example, right? Uh, uh, the step where you basically uh, collect all the things that are in your wardrobe, right? It is called content audit, where you identify that these are the things that don't belong here and these are the things that belong together. So basically what you're doing is you're auditing whatever is there in your wardrobe. Uh, just to understand what all is there uh, uh, in your wardrobe. That's called content auditing, basically evaluating and identifying what are the information elements across the product, right? The second is information inventory. So it's a process of listing and documenting. Uh, now this you might not do in real world, but to give you a rough example, uh, when I said you separate the things uh, that belong, you basically uh, group the things that belong to the wardrobe and list uh, and group the things that don't belong to the wardrobe, right? Uh, you, are, you are doing kind of a content inventory. Uh, you might count that you have a certain number of t-shirts with you, certain number of jeans with you, certain number of trousers with you, right? When you count things, it's, it's basically, it's called content inventory. Uh, then there is called content organization, basically grouping the content after auditing an inventory. So grouping all your pants together, right? Grouping all your t-shirts together, grouping all your uh, undergarments together. This is called content organization. What you are doing is you are uh, collecting the contents that are uh, homogeneous, that belong together into one place. And the last thing is content labeling. So I, as I said, uh, I'll take the example of a box. Uh, when I take the box, I place elements in it. On the top of the box, I uh, post a slip or a post-it, writing the things that are in there. So basically I'm labeling the box. I'm writing what are the things that are there in the box. So this is called content labeling. Uh, I have a simple, I've created a thought of a simple acronym, which is called Chowel. Uh, or if you're from India, if you're watching this, uh, Chowel, rice, Chowel. So either Chowel or Chowel which stands for, CA stands for content audit, content inventory, I, O for content organization, and L for content labeling, Chow. Okay, uh, so as you see in this image, uh, the navigation is labeled as top nav above. Uh, the pages are grouped and labeled as uh, other pages if you see down uh, in, in the bottom uh, center. Uh, now I will not cover how to perform con content audit, inventory organization, and labeling today. But again, I'll cover each topic individually in the coming videos because they are very vast topics. Uh, uh, cool. So that was it. That was the basics of uh, information architecture. Now let's summarize what we have learned today. Uh, information architecture term was coined by Richard Saul Vorman in 1976, but it was popularized by Low Rosenfield and Peter Morville in 1996. Uh, information architecture is logically organizing information elements and provide a helpful structure to the users so it's easier to them to find whatever they are seeking for. Uh, third is information elements means anything which can be read or allows the user to take any action. Uh, the four steps to create information architecture are uh, content audit, inventory, organization labeling. I just uh, noticed that <laughs> there's a typo in content, <laughs> content. Uh, and the simple acronym to remember this is CHOWEL. So if you have any questions and the last thing is uh, information architecture is not UX. It's not just about building navigation or menus or search. It is way more than that. So that is what information architecture is. Uh, I, I do get some FAQs, 
for information architecture the uh, one of the faqs is uh, how is faq how is an information architecture different from a site map right let me go all the way up to let me uh, change my screen first for you wait a minute i have multiple screens here so it's difficult to track uh, okay yeah uh, so so i get a lot of uh, what do you say questions that how is a site map different from an information architecture uh, and the answer to that is uh, they're completely different their purpose is completely different uh, a site map uh, the, although a, the structure of a site map looks similar to an information architecture and it also does use the principle of information architecture but a site map is used for two purposes first of all uh, to document what all pages are there in a particular website and it's specific to one particular website right it's not uh, it 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 doesn't uh, combine uh, a lot of products especially if your product is a bigger uh, platform like amazon which has multiple products so a site map is locally specific to that particular website uh, and it is used uh, for seo purposes so if a google bot or a yahoo search engine bot comes to your page uh, they look for uh, a site map and with the help of site map they realize that what are the different pages that uh, your website contains so they could go to those pages and index those pages in their uh, search queries search index so they are very different uh, the purpose is uh, very different so don't get confused with the difference between a site map and a information architecture right uh, the second question is uh, how does information architecture help uh, so one point i have already mentioned uh it it uh, it helps a user to interact with the website because we can't interact with the information architecture we interact with a user interface right so that's how it helps second is uh, it helps companies to avoid duplicacy in content uh, or information uh, and it's helpful for uh, very big products also uh, a product that is very big so uh, it happens that sometimes a piece of content or a piece of uh, let's say uh, article is posted twice like on on one page and on another so when you create a information architecture and you do content audit you identify all these pieces you identify what are the duplicates and how are different things used by different names across the website so basically it brings consistency in the product and that is how it's useful for companies